Today is our last group meeting. <laughs> when we talked about the title of the installation, Matam Alchemy, do we keep it? Do we go for another title? My name is Ingrid Dobshi. I am a professor of mathematics at Duke University. I have been involved for the last two years almost in a very large uh, collaborative art installation that seeks to illustrate uh, mathematical concepts but also communicate the joy and the whimsy and the beauty of mathematics. It's an alchemistic mixture of mathematical concepts. Alchemistic in the sense that it's a little bit magical, mystical. It's a room full of stuff. We call it Mathemalchemy. It's a wonderful world that shows tons of mathematical concepts in ways you have never seen them before. And it's fun and it's beautiful. It's magical. The idea for Mathemalchemy, I think with looking back, I have been fascinated by uh, creativity everywhere, all the time. I love seeing the completely unbridled creativity at Burning Man and the art installations there and how they are playful and powerful and at the same time. I also love uh, going to the exhibits at the joint meetings of the American Math Association where they always have an exhibit of art object, it's a juried exhibit, but of beautiful objects that are made mostly by mathematicians or very mathematical artists that illustrate points of mathematics in a beautiful way. And then I, I saw Time to Break Free by Dominique Ehrman, which was a big installation that brought together many elements in order to bring the very playful idea of this fanciful machine that made characters from the quilt come alive. I thought maybe somebody with this fantastic imagination and these skills would be open to try to work with mathematicians. The bringing together of mathematicians who are also superb crafters and who use a variety of different techniques, each expert in their own technique, in a collaboration together with Dominique, and so I contacted her. The first question she asked me about math is, I hope that you didn't have a bad experience with math when you were in school. And my experience was not too good like most people. She had in mind for a long time to create an installation, but she was looking for somebody who could create and was able to give workshop. And that's exactly what I do. And she said, it sounds interesting. And I am so thrilled that because, I mean, she, she's an artist who wasn't into mathematics. I mean, she's a museum quality artist. And it was August 2019. And since then, we've been working together every week, almost on a daily basis. I came here from Denver and I am an artist and I was part of the nautical scene. So I made the entire bay. Well, I orchestrated it being made. Um, yeah, and I learned all kinds of things I didn't know before um, because it was the nautical scene. It's K-N-O-T nautical rather than nautical nautical. I guess I started working on the sort of nautical scene. That was the, the sort of thing I was started out being part of. Everything has a twist to it, so to speak that have, has to do with knot theory. I also kind of got sucked into the, the lighthouse. Uh, I mostly do 3D printing. So, well, I have a couple of things that, um, uh, that are gonna be in, in the Mathemalchemy build. There's this polyhedra here. And then this, um, uh, this is gonna cast well, there's going to be a light in the bottom and it'll cast a shadow up onto the ceiling. There are the silhouettes which are a little bit outside that world, which are projections of the viewers, 
but also the makers of the artwork. So they're human figures rather than critters. And uh, there's a child, there's a teenager, there's an adult. But they interact with the world. The adult is generating these ideas that are swirling around. And that can be perceived by the people in the world. Ingrid had this vision of an installation that would bring people understanding that math is beautiful and fun and could be accessible for everybody. And so all these components were fabricated and then brought here and we've been building the whole uh, installation. We had to make something that would hold, so we needed a story and we needed scenes. They really collaborated a lot. You know, it wasn't like you just spent a couple of minutes talking to someone. Everyone was just like, you know, back and forth and back and forth. And almost everything that you see was touched by three people. Someone designed it, someone fabricated it, someone painted it, and then you go back and vote. We have a bakery, we have a curio store, we have a terrace where you can eat little pastries. This is a, a, a gold nut. It's a very special nut, actually. It has its own mathematical history. Everything has its mathematical history. One thing I like about this project and this sort of uh, turning mathematical ideas into art is it immediately shows people that this is something worth looking at. A mathematical figure can often look like just a mathematical figure. So this looks like a clay roof, an interesting different clay, clay roof. And so the fact that someone has put the time in, you can feel the time making it into clay in a way that you don't necessarily feel the time to make the mathematical ideas. Once you think of a cat and Schrodinger's cat, you think of Schrodinger's equation. And this is Schrodinger's time-dependent equation. These little bowls, as like the ceramic animals, were made by, by Liz, Liz Bailey, and she's just such a, a whimsical person. Zito's path, on which a tortoise wa walks, is a physical uh, uh, rendering of the conundrum that Zeno proposed in antiquity, that in order to get to a place, you first have to walk half the distance. So at some time before getting there, you will have a time that you've walked half. And then beyond that, there will be a time that you've walked a quarter of the distance, half of what remains. And beyond that, there will be a moment that you've walked an eighth of the distance, half of what remains still, and so on. So you keep adding time moments, an infinite number of time moments that follow each other, and that all have to precede the time where you arrive at your destination. And that was something that the Greeks could not imagine. One morning, Tortoise woke up and decided she was going to go for a walk. And, and that was the beginning of my story about uh, this tortoise, who was later named Tess by a couple of people in the installation, by Ed and Tasha. Um, and it's her journey, sort of her, her day of walking and, and learning about infinity. And so that was the, the basis for, my, for her story. And, and most of the things, elements involved in it have to do with the, the notion of infinity. The mountain itself is created of terraces the mountain she's going to climb is created of terraces um, that basically are giving the idea of what's called a Lebesgue integral, which is a way you can compute the volume of a three-dimensional solid. And it's also got a bunch of uh, cliffs, which are made by he uh, hexagonal dowels, which uh, represents Riemann integration, so two kinds of integration there. This is getting very mathy. I've never had any mathematical art accepted to a prestigious conference, possibly the most prestigious and largest conference of mathematics that there is every year. While I was at the meeting, I saw Dominique carrying what I thought was a park, a model of a, an actual park of mathematical things that people could play with. I attended the session where Ingrid and Dominique were presenting um, the project and put out a call for volunteers to, to help. And I talked to Dominique right afterwards. And signed up and then we had a first meeting there, either that day or the next day, where a lot of the people who were involved in the project were in attendance and then others were, were brought on later. The original plan was to do, to do this work in free workshops where we would get together and build things. But then COVID happened. 
everything was cancelled. But we decided to hold our workshop on Zoom. I think in the past 14 months, people needed something to kind of grasp onto a bigger thing. This was a bigger thing for a large group of people. And they just, you know, we all fell in love with it. We all just kind of go, sit back and go, wow, that is just, it's awesome. And everybody would work and, and we, we put together little working groups on different components of the installation. We needed to find a, a way to add a conversation and understand each other. And because of COVID, we, we extended the period. It was supposed to be a nine month period and it became a 18 month period. Everything got talked over many times and lots of voting and lots of like, you know, we like this, we talk things through and so on. Dominique has uh, the final say on the colors, the, 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 the layout, the how things sort of visually interact. And Ingrid has the final say on the mathematics that's in the piece. And it has to be correct. It was going to end fairly quickly and probably everybody would have just moved on. But with this kind of, especially the intensity of being isolated in your home. So it, it became a lot more solid of a, a community, I think. Was explaining it to them. The way we generated ideas for the installation was a little bit organized. So we decided early on we would have scenes and subgroups and uh, would, would talk to each other, would occasionally call in help from somebody who was not part of the subgroup for one meeting or so. Uh, and they would hash out ideas, but every idea would always be presented to the full group at group meetings and be approved by the group. Sometimes a subgroup came up with something that others felt wouldn't fit well, and then they were sent back to, to rehammer out a new take on it. If we can make that happen, then the idea would be to offer the NFT or pieces of NFT uh, on, on one of these NFT markets uh, and use the money it raises to uh, fund graduate fellowships in mathematics in uh, developing countries that are too poor to have any support for graduate studies. If somebody of you has absolute fundamental opposition to it, then we won't pursue it. The piece has many different narratives that are interwoven. I mean, there's one overarching narrative that this is a world in which critters live and do things. And there's a lot of mathematics interwoven in their life and in the objects they handle. and. Uh, but there is a, a life, there's a shop where people can go shop, where there's luxury goods, there's a baker with an assistant and they're going to bake things of, that will be eaten on the terrace or, or sold to customers. There's a tortoise going on a walk. So there's a lot of critters living there and doing things. At one point I just had to mention that we need to stop the imagination part because we need to fabricate everything we plan. Um, it was pretty intense at the beginning. Things slowed down a little bit as we were all making things. And then it sped up again as we were getting ready to come together. So um, it was a lot of Zoom. I'm the guy that knows how to cut wood carefully or clean up glue lines or, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm here primarily in my ability to work with hand tools carefully and uh, and lift things up and carry them. I'm working on that. I mean, look at that thing. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely fabulous. Um, this is a great collaboration. Um, you know, it's a big group, so as all big groups, you know, it can get a little disorganized or off topic or, you know, that sort of thing. But um, it's really fun working with artists. They see things very differently than we do. And it's very fun to see and meet all the mathematicians. I knew um, three of the people prior to this project, um, and Ingrid, who I'd seen in talks but had never met in person, um, from the knitting circle at the joint math meetings. My team was called the Ball Arches team. I don't know if we have a story. Like, we just wanted to have these ball arches. So we have two arches. One of them is a diverging arch and one's a converging arch. And maybe this is the story. So one has a finite length. We don't see the tiniest balls because we couldn't make them. But the other one, which also in practice ends when it goes into the ocean, we didn't make more balls. But if we 
imagined an infinite number of balls, it would never end. It would reach past past the building, past the Earth, past the solar system, past the Milky Way, and would keep going forever. You have a bunch of numbers, and if you would add them up, they would add up to infinity, or like they would add up, they would just keep adding up and going blah, right? And if you have a converging sequence, when you add them all up, they add up to an actual number. So maybe this seems confusing because you have like an infinite number of numbers. How could it add up to something finite? I was primarily doing the garden, and um, the other thing that I spend a lot of time on is the cryptography quilt. And it's interesting because the quilt has a lot of different layers. We have lots of hidden messages in the quilt. Some of the blocks have different hidden messages. There's, there's different codes that use the colors of the fabric. There's different codes that use um, beadwork. And it turned out in the end that the number of different fabrics that we used was 26. So, so we, around the outside of the quilt, we have um, the initials of every member of the team. I think that there's, there is something for everybody in there. And it's sort of a matter of how much, either how much experience you have, how much time you want to spend with it. But, there is something for everyone, I think, in that quilt. Okay, we've got this tribute to music. Um, we've got kind of in line with the coding on, on the crypto quilt. We have a representation of Bach's name um, in our music book. Four different clefs, but the, the note in the middle, depending on how you read the clefs, spells B flat, which is B, uh, the letter B in German. Um, we've got an A, a C, and then an H, which is a B natural in German. Um, the music here is by Johann Sebastian Bach. Um, it, we chose it because it kind of became our theme song early on in Math and Alchemy. Other pages in the book reference um, Western music history. We've got um, some notation over here that's Naples. The exhibit is, this is its test site, because if you want to bring to a museum something that has to be there for several months, you want to make sure that it will stand up for several months and not start collapsing. So you test these things. It will be uh, packed up, we'll have a goodbye party for it, that bring, we'll bring the whole team together and have an event for Duke University. And uh, Dominique will then pack it up. It is all designed so that it will fit in uh, crates that can travel easily. So we intend this to be a living exhibit. The first exhibit will be in the flagship building of the uh, National Academy of Sciences in Washington, D.C., uh, where it will be for four months. Mathemalchemy allowed us to grow a com community. It was really an alchemy of personalities. It was wonderful. We all felt like we were family, I mean, after a while. I mean, we, we celebrated babies and we mourned with each other when somebody lost somebody. And because we always kept saying, look, it's a collaboration. It's all of us together. Does Beth Malcomy have a purpose? I hope it will impact people, especially young people. I hope it will communicate, even to people who may not feel it themselves, the joy that one can have in mathematics. So I think, I hope it will cast a completely different light on mathematics for many people, and that they will, it will delight them. I mean, it delighted us. I hope it will delight people. Now I see the poetry in math, I see the beauty of math, and the, all the color in math, and that has changed. The last two years has been a, a real transformation for me. We need more people who look at mathematics the way they look at poetry or popular music or painting because mathematics really has an important component that way. If more people can understand that mathematics is not this dreary subject that everybody or most people hate in high school, but that it can have that wonderment for you and that you don't have to be a mathematical really genius or really talented person. It doesn't require a special uh, instinct to get it. Just like you can appreciate great art without being an artist, uh, then I think I will, we will feel that we have succeeded. The, the sort of high school, even college experience of mathematics is, can be very sort of 
you know, you learn to do this very sort of crank the handle and out comes some answer and you just follow the procedure and you don't really care what you're doing and, what, you know, is this going to be on the test? Why do I need to know this? And there's so much beauty there that uh, I think we're hoping to transmit some of that to people who come to see it. Yeah, I hope that people are able to see it and then see it again and say, oh, wait, I didn't notice that. Math isn't just this thing that's there. It's something that humans do for a reason and, it, it, you know, it, that relates to, you know, sort of beauty, truth, you know, the, the challenges that we have to face and then the, the sort of, you know, joy of figuring these things out, those aha moments. And so um, I think this installation along with the, the things I look at regularly really sort of has to fundamentally do with, with the joy and play in math. Here's this beautiful stuff that a lot of people don't know about. And here it is. It's, it's a goodbye. It's, it's introducing everybody else. And it's the, f the only day that it's completed and it's the last day. <laughs> And I think it was also good for the people on the team to hear the perspective at the end of you and how it was different than other workshops we had done, and, and but how, how you really appreciated the experience. And, and with very basic math, like how to measure and, and how to make sure <laughs> everything fits, but it's I different was able math to. What we, we, yeah, but uh, you, and, and I think it was a very nice way of. I mean, it was a good idea to have this meeting to wrap up, to have a gathering of the team of everybody who could make it, and and uh, and then Ron will start packing. Yeah. Yeah. It's also nice to have that a celebration before uh, back up. I'll miss it. You. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know you will miss it. Absolutely, I've missed it because I was away. But yeah, yeah. seeing it now, but yeah, I. Uh, I'll be proud to uh, travel with it. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Don't put these knots in order, cause they're tangled in the water. Heave away, make sure these heave away. Come put these knots before us, hyperbolic satellites. Heave away, meet on the birds, we'll all heave away. I wrote me not a letter, it was a thing as sweet and smooth. Heave away, me jollies, heave away. And on came right and right, so twist was tight, he made his move. Heave away, me jolly birds, we'll all heave away. Sometimes a spot is sink or fall, sometimes I see the door. Heave away, me jollies, heave away. But now we found it clearly what dearest thought were more. Heave away, me jolly birds, we'll all heave away. Heave away, me jolly birds, we'll all heave away.